All right, <laughs> fantastic. All right, I'm back at it now, hooray. Um, Danse everyone, Oki Bonzu. Uh, I just realized that my sound wasn't working. Thank you very much, Richard, for letting me know. Um, yeah, but I hope everybody is having a beautiful week. Um, I hope uh, your last week has been better than mine. Um, but you know, learnings and healing and it shows you how resilient you are when you go through a lot of hard things. Um, and I'm definitely a resilient lady. Uh, but uh, yeah, so today we're definitely going to bring in some smudging. Uh, and I think it's really important just to, you know, honor and to ground ourselves and ask for the healing that we need. Um, to not necessarily push through things. Uh, so it was hard for me last week because normally I'm going and going and going, but last week I had to shut everything down and just say, no, I'm taking the time to heal. I'm taking the time for myself and my family. And so that was, it was important to cancel all of that work and to realize that, you know, that work, it, it's going to be there eventually, but um, my family needs me more than anything. And, and so that's important. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to start with actually today with a smudge and then I'll go into the welcome song. Um, but I think smudging to welcome everybody into the circle is very important as well. And so now that my sound is working, I can start talking about my medicines again. And so, uh, again, these are uh, OG Cree teachings. So I'm Cree from Muscat Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. And so my teachings might be slightly different than a Blackwood Elder or than a Stony Elder, than a Sarsi Elder, than a Salish Elder. But I think it's really important to learn from many, many different people. Um, and because you never know, you never know what's going to resonate with you, what's going to make sense for you. And so that being said, um, I can only share what I know. If it makes sense, awesome. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Go and explore. There's so many amazing things in the world, so much uh, incredible information, and you never know what's going to resonate with you. This is why we have oral traditions and oral storytelling. Whatever's meant for us, we'll remember. Whatever's not, won't take up space in your brain. You'll be okay. And so uh, in the east, on my medicine wheel, we have sweetgrass. Sweetgrass, is uh, the masculine medicine. It's connected to grandfather son, which is connected to fire. Um, and grandfather son, big ball of fire in the sky. So this is why he's connected to fire. Uh, it's also connected to new beginnings, uh, the morning, of course, because that's a brand new day that you get to face every single day. Uh, it's also connected to our childhood because that's where we begin our lives. And so yeah, this is sweet grass. Uh, it's braided to honor the seven teachings and our seven generations behind and seven generations forward. There are seven blades of sweet grass in every section. Can't really count them because they're all twisty, but it's pretty cool. And so that is sweet grass in the east for our mind. Uh, anytime you need to think things through, definitely burn some sweet grass. Anytime you're trying to go through some uh, mental trauma or mental blocks, burn some sweet grass. Uh, or if you're, well, my son would burn them all the time when he's studying for exams or doing his work or through university, but now he's graduating. So great. Uh, and so the next medicine that we have, because we're going to follow the medicine, we're going to, uh, medicine wheel, we're going to follow the sun and go to the, uh, south. And in the south we have cedar. Cedar is our physical body medicine. I love cedar. It's so beautiful. Um, it teaches us about honoring the relationship that we have with mother earth, honoring the relationship that we have with our bodies and really deeply connecting to that relationship. Um, it teaches us that Mother Earth has everything that we need as long as we honor the relationship that we have. Every time we breathe, we have a reciprocal relationship with Mother Earth. Um, but it's that reminder that we always have to give something back before we take it, because that's what a good relationship is. Because if you're in a relationship where, you know, somebody's taking and taking and taking and never giving anything back, it's not a good relationship, not a healthy relationship. So you got to take a step away from that. Um, and it's the same thing. We have to honor and build a healthy relationship with Mother Earth, uh, because that's important. Uh, cedar is amazing. I'm actually going to have some cedar tea after we're done here because my throat's a little itchy uh, and um, my nose is really stuffy because hello allergy season. Thanks for that. And cedar is uh, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. It also has an antihistamine uh, and a decongestant. So it is my jam during allergy season. So that is cedar. It connects to um, our physical body connects to our adolescence because that's when we go through the most physical changes. Uh, and this is also why it is jam packed with good things for our body, including vitamins and minerals that we may need to just rejuvenate um, ourself. Uh, the next medicine that we have is cedar, or sorry, I already talked about cedar. I'm, I've got it in my brain now because I'm like craving tea, even though it tastes terrible. I put a lot of honey in it and then I can kind of negate the taste. Uh, also because it's so bitter, I put a little bit of like spice, so a little bit of cinnamon. And Bella, those are my secrets. Um, and sometimes mint. So this is sage. That's half a thing of sage. I've been using that one. 
Uh, and so sage being the feminine medicine that's connected to our emotions, connected to water. Uh, it's um, really beautiful for uh, honoring relationship, um, honoring our emotional uh, baggage that we're carrying. Uh, and so to kind of heal through those things, work through those things, sage is that way to go. Uh, it's really about being open, being vulnerable, and recognizing that our emotions are actually one of our greatest strengths, because without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have strong families or friendships, strong relationships, strong community. Um, and so we need that. And sage is the same way. We need to be able to clear out some of that emotional baggage that we carry with us uh, so that we can leave room for the good things. Um, and so it teaches us how to let things go. Uh, emotionally and how to honor our tears because that's truly how those things leave our body. If we honor those emotions as we feel them, they're not going to drag us down later. And this is what sage teaches us. This is what we're going to be smudging with today. I'm Cree, so I smudge with a lot of sage. Um, and because it's considered the uh, women's medicine in Cree, women, um, if they're on their moon time, they can smudge with it at any time with Cree, um, with sage. Uh, there's some teachings in different nations that say when a woman on, on her moon time, she cannot smudge with sweet grass because sweet grass is connected to fire. It's connected to that masculine energy and when we're on our moon time we're flowing we're literally overflowing <laughs> with water uh, and so it kind of um, negates the energy of sweet grass and so this is why we don't go into mixed ceremonies this is why we don't burn other people's sweet grass if it's our own sweet grass it, it knows our energy so that's fine but just yeah I always take a step back from ceremony if I'm on my moon time but it's not about something being wrong with you it's that you're so powerful at that time you just have to own that power and you know be comfortable with it and take a step back oh i'm sorry that smells so good <laughs> i just love the smell of sage after you squish it it smells really good and so sage going in the bowl and that's what we'll be smudging with uh in the north that is our connection to spirit we have kinsasa and tobacco kinsasa is red willow bark and tobacco is uh, self-explanatory. Um, it's really about honoring the relationships uh, with spirit so um, and with each other. So when we gift tobacco, it's saying thank you to our ancestors. When we give tobacco to the earth, it's um, honoring the relationship that we're trying to build with the, uh, with the earth. So it's a relationship from spirit to spirit. And so this is why we honor tobacco. Also high in phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen. So when we give it back to the earth, it helps plants grow back faster. It's not meant for us. This is why it's toxic to us. But the same thing that makes it toxic to us makes it good for plants because it keeps pests off them. It's a natural pesticide. So it's my gardening trick. <laughs> I need to build some garden boxes so I can actually have some garden, some semblance of a garden this year. Mm -hmm. And so there's that. And this is what Kinsessa or the red willow bark looks like when it's ground up. And um, I'm going to have to grind some more because I'm going to be doing a couple medicine bag workshops uh, in the coming days. Um, and so, yeah, and those are the medicines. So before I smudge, I'm going to take off my earrings because metal holds energy and you want to get rid of anything that you're carrying. So this is why it's important to take off that metal. Uh, if it's your glasses, that's the way you see the world. So you would smudge those. You wouldn't necessarily have to take them off per se. Um, and if it's your wedding ring or a piercing, it's part of you. So don't worry about taking that out. But awesome. Oh, where are my matches? And so I only use matches. I never use a lighter because uh, a lighter disrespects the relationship that we have with Mother Earth. We're not actually entitled to those things that are oh, in the lighter. Uh, we're not entitled to the butane. We're not allowed to dig that far into the earth. We're not entitled to the metal because the way that we extract it, it damages the earth. It hurts the earth and hurts our relationship with it. We're not entitled to the plastic. Certainly not <laughs> because it's causing so much damage to the earth. And so by using a lighter on the medicines, it automatically disrespects the relationship that we are trying to build with the earth. Whereas there would have sulfur um, harvesting ceremonies. So sulfur and sticks. Yes, good. It's not perfect, but it's not a lighter. So I'm just gonna light that. And I never blow on it because your breath is your life and your life is precious and you don't waste that for anybody. So you make sure you fan it with your hand or a feather. I did have a feather, but my cat's probably got it. So <laughs> it's gone again. Yay, I was so excited because I'd actually managed to keep a feather for more than two months, but no, not anymore. I think that's the limit on feathers, two months. <laughs> so the first thing I do is I clean my hands, so anything that I'm carrying, I get rid of. 
I bring it over my body four times to honor the four directions in my body. I expand my mind so I can think clearly and learn from every person that crosses my path. So I can remember to be open-minded and never rigid with my thinking and to break those old patterns and cycles of beliefs and thoughts. I smudge my ears so I can be open to hear all of the messages that Creator sends me to remind myself we have two ears and one mouth so we can listen twice as much as we speak and also to remember the wisdom in stillness and to remember the wisdom that the plants and the animals are constantly sharing and to be open to those wisdoms and truths. Smudge my eyes so I can see all of the beauty that surrounds me, so I can see and give thanks for my vision, but also so I can see the unseen. I'm very thankful for my vision this lifetime. I smudge my nose so I smell danger and nature and cookies. I smudge my mouth so I speak only true and kind words that are helpful and benefit mankind. Switch my throat, because I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime, so I can continue to give voice to the voiceless and to honor the voices that I've been given, the names that I have been given. Uh, in Cree, my mushroom gave me the name She Who Sings and Dances with Spirits in a Storm, uh, and it just kind of turned into storm song, so that's why that's my nickname, and it has been forever. Uh, and then my Blackfoot name through um, Clarence Wolflag is Red Singer, because there is not a word for pink in Blackfoot. Mm -hmm. Or else I would totally be Pink Singer. <laughs> I switch my heart so I can be open and repair that heart. It was quite broken. So I can share unconditional love openness and compassion and kindness to my friends, family, and all our relations. Not just the two-leggeds, but all of our relations. I smudge my stomach so the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. To honor the abundance that we have and also to share that abundance around the world. So nobody is without. Smudge my lungs to honor the sacred breath that we all share. So I breathe good air and really remind myself that that is the air and the breath of our ancestors, which are the trees. I smudge my belly button because that is where our spirit is. This is where we're connected before we come into this world. And so this is where our spirit speaks through us and to us. I smudge my shoulders and my back so I can carry all of the responsibilities that I have been gifted with grace and humility. I smudge my arms and my hands so I can do the good work that Creator's put me here to do. I smudge my legs so I walk this red road in a good way. That's the path of Aboriginal spirituality. I smudge my feet so I stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth treading lightly upon her and honoring her with every step so she may guide me in a good way. And then if there's anywhere else in your body you need a little extra love, um, so I went for a massage, I kind of kicked my butt a little, so I'm going to just smudge my hips because those always need a little bit of healing. And there we go. And then if there's people in your life that you want to send that love and appreciation to, including yourself, you will hold that in your heart, those intentions, those people, furry people too. And then send them that love and appreciation and that healing. And then when you're all done, you just say hi hi or miigwech or merci or grazie or shish or donkashe or however you say thank you in your language. Because your language is important. It's a piece of you. It's a part of you. And it's the way that you share with your ancestors. And so, um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with the Cree welcome song now that I've kind of opened up the circle with smudge. I want to invite in um, our ancestors with the song. Uh, and this song, it's normally when we sing songs, it's in rounds of four to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel, which I talked a little bit about. Uh, but this song we sing in rounds of three. 
to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning, there's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to honor each other for those differences. Because if we were all exactly the same, the world would be incredibly boring and nothing would ever get done. So we need those differences to be able to have strong and resilient communities and a strong and resilient world. It teaches us to come into the circle without judgment, not compare ourselves to others because we're on completely different journeys, but also to recognize the value in other people. Mia Sin is from the Natahao family from Sturgeon Lake, and I thank that family for keeping this song alive and for keeping the story behind the song alive. Um, and uh, I honor families like the Natahao family for sharing uh, our teachings and our songs and our stories and keeping our languages resilient um, and really passing that on to future generations. And so Mia Sin uh, doesn't just mean welcome to welcome in all of our ancestors, but it also means beautiful. Mia sin, mia sin, ha se mina, ha se mina, e peta kote, ni wago magan, ho ta, Homa kita skino miasen miasen ha se mina ha se mina e peta ko. Niwa go magan Ho ta Ho ma Kita skino Mi asen Mi asen Ho Hi, hi, and welcome to the circle today, everybody. I'm going to have a quick sip of water, and then I'm going to share the healing song um, and talk a little bit about it. And why I think it's very, very important. Um, so, the healing song was actually gifted um, and passed forward through several elders. Uh, some from my home community, um, some, well, all Cree or Oji Cree, or even Métis. Um, but this used to be a ceremonial song, so we only used to hear it in ceremony. We only used to hear it in ceremony because it is such a beautiful and sacred song, and we have seen miracles happen with this song. But um, a lot of the elders said, we're in a time where society needs this. People need this. We all need this. We need the healing to come together, um, to uh, connect with each other, to honor each other in a good way, to uh, be able to heal our past, but also to heal that intergenerational trauma for our future generations. And so this song has really been essential in breaking those cycles of abuse, of uh, really honoring the healing that we need, not just physical healing, but mental, emotional, and spiritual healing, because we need to reconnect to our being. Um, and that is really important because everybody has a different way to do that. And it's not about enforcing, it's about finding your own path. Nobody else can tell you what your path is going to be. Uh, and this honors that. Um, this healing song, we sing it in a heartbeat because that heartbeat is that pulse, it's that healing beat, it's that um, 
pulse of Mother Earth. It's that pulse that we hear when we're inside our mother's womb. And then that second sound that we feel throughout our entire being is that heartbeat because we know that we're alive when we have that heartbeat, when we have that pulse, when we have that connection. Um, and so that's that drum beat that's within it. The third round, however, that's our healing round. And so in the third round, we stop drumming. And in that silence, that's where we fill that silence with our intention, with our prayers, with that healing, with the things that we need in our life. Uh, and for, you know, those people that we need or those pets that we need to give those healings to. Um, and then when the drum beat comes back in, we let that intention, that energy, that healing, that love, that appreciation, we let it out to the universe. Um, so that creator, God, Allah, Buddha, um, you know, big spaghetti monster in the sky, whatever you believe in, whatever, um, you know, energy or deity you believe in has the ability to do the work with that energy because it's really about setting that intention and putting it out there because if you don't ask, you don't get. And so, yeah, this is the Cree healing song, also called the crying song or the wailing song. And um, it's just reminding us that our tears are sacred, our tears are healing. And so if you feel overcome with emotions, if um, you start to cry in this song, that's okay, because that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to let those things out. Honor the emotions when they come, honor your tears as they come. And so this is the Cree healing song. This is the mother song. Uh, with what I'd gone through last week, I was uh, just overwhelmed with the amount of people who've reached out and who've had those same experiences. Uh, and I think it's something that we don't really talk about. We don't have that support in our community um, for really hard times. We need better supports. We need better mental health uh, in place. We need um, better physical health in place uh, so that we can avoid these things in the future. We need to start listening to uh, women and to people about their bodies um, because we know our own bodies we are in it and so when doctors dismiss us it's like gaslighting medical gaslighting thanks man um, but we need to start looking at the system and how it's broken and start to make it work for the people it's designed for which is humans <laughs> people uh, yeah because the system is just really broken and we need to come together to fix it and so um, this song, the mother song, is dedicated to all of the caregivers out there, all of the mothers out there, um, all of the people who've gotten close um, and have had severe loss. Um, in this song, it's the mother calling out and the child's calling back, but it drifts further and further and further away. Um, and as a mother, you're as a parent, as a caregiver, you're always wanting the best. You want to make sure that you're protecting your child and you want to give them everything that you can. Um, and unfortunately, with things like the residential school, school in the 60s scoop and the intergenerational trauma, it's taken that ability to be a mother away from many of us. Um, 
but we're starting to reclaim those things and coming back to traditional ways of knowing. And so this is why it's extra devastating when um, you know, we've had a severe loss in our families. Uh, and so this song is really dedicated to all of those, all of those people who have had that severe loss, that severe disconnect, but also that sense of hope that we can connect, we can reconnect, and uh, we can support each other through all of these things. So, yeah, this is the mother song. sing it enough to remember it which is bad I should definitely remember it <laughs> one moment here here we go boom alrighty 
I should have been more prepared, but I'm going to do this one. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. This song is called Daughter. Um, I wrote this, um, woo, I'm gonna get emotional, oh my god. So, uh, I wrote this, um, just kind of like right before and then also during the pandemic. Uh, so I was involved in an event, an event, a dinner series called The Cinecakes, and it was awesome. It was an amazing excuse to hang out with elders and uh, amazing people in the community and artists, and it brought all of uh, these stakeholders and students and people together to be able to share ideas, to be able to talk about what truth and reconciliation is, um, to, oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, to be able to um, just really honor each other's voices, to actually listen, to have conversations, because I don't think we really have those opportunities to have those conversations, whether it be with elders or knowledge keepers or uh, artists um, uh, from different places. So we feel very siloed, like we're all in our little bubbles. Um, but this gave us an opportunity to expand those bubbles and to learn and to meet more people and to listen to the wisdom of our elders uh, and the knowledge keepers and our youth. Our youth had such brilliant things to say and also we had an opportunity to create art around all that they, we have learned um, and we were all given kinship tables and so my kinship table was daughter and I thought oh well that's odd uh, <laughs> because I have two sons but uh, I'm like well I am a daughter I guess and my mom's a daughter and so I was thinking it more like that or like I march for murdered and missing indigenous women girls and two-spirit people and so well there's that and so that's kind of what I assumed when I was gifted that um, that term or that kinship term but uh, lo and behold uh, right before the pandemic um, I ended up with two daughters. They ended up moving in with me in February. And then of course lockdown happened. <laughs> and it was like, we're gonna get to know each other real well with all of our board games. Uh, and all of a sudden I had daughters. And of course, as soon as I was like, oh, well that kinship term that I was given, it made sense. And so uh, I wrote this for my daughters, for the girls. Um, and uh, now it makes so much more sense. Um, Sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry for my tears. Never apologize for your tears. Don't you ever apologize for your tears. Um, but uh, this this makes sense with the loss that I kind of experienced last week. And so this is for my girls. The words in it mean um, our daughters, my daughter, your daughter. Um, no, and her daughter, but not in that order. So it's just really embracing all of our daughters, um, all of our femmes, all of our two spirit people who identify in that uh, feminine way and um, just bringing them together as having them. They are loved, they are valued, uh, and they are appreciated, and they are sacred. And uh, one of the words is, I love you. <laughs> it literally means, um, I love you. It's a bigger term than that, but it means um, I love you and all my relations, so.
sister from another mother, both of them, so uh, Sandra Many Feathers as well as Stephanie Joe English, and um, I'm just so blessed and humbled to have strong women in my life. Um, and yeah, this song is just really about showing that you love and appreciate those people and really remembering to reach out and tell them that you love and appreciate them. And so this is uh, Gitsy Gotherman, the I Love You song. It's from uh, Olivia Tailfeathers, I believe is the one who the forward. <clears throat> side which is why my auntie posted go oilers and then the other half are on the flame side um which i don't know i think my auntie just goes back and forth because she was like loving the flames a couple years ago so <laughs> just kidding auntie love you um but yeah the battle of alberta and this is why i'm a vancouver fan because i do not want to roll in the mud <laughs> so uh yeah i'm gonna sing the hockey night in canada thing dun, 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 dun. oh it's not that anymore that makes me sad should have kept it. Uh, but I'm going to sing a couple of women's songs just because I think that's really important to bring that energy in. Um, so the first I'm going to sing is the uh, women's honoring song uh, from Joan Henry, who's Arapaho Cherokee. Uh, I thank her for sharing this song and bringing it forward. Um, and it's really to honor that pulse of Mother Earth, the pulse that's within each and every one of us. Uh, and yeah, that sacredness that we have that connects each and every one of us. And everyone has that sacred feminine as well as that balance of sacred masculine in them. And so it's really about acknowledging and honoring that. And so, yeah, this is Anagia, the women's honor song. <clears throat>
warrior song and then um, I'm gonna close with the traveling song and probably the Thunderbird song just because I need that reminder and so this is the women's warrior song um, this is a Salish song and I'm just really thankful for those strong matriarchs who have come before us who have led the way and left that path for us um, and for all of the families that are really striving for justice for all of our women the women warriors and um yeah all warriors really but a warrior is of service it's someone who gives up themselves for the betterment of their community and so that's a true warrior spirit so be a warrior <laughs> doesn't mean you have to fight or get in fisticuffs or you know challenge everyone at every turn but it's standing up for what's right and showing people in their community that they are cared for that they are loved and they are valued that's a huge aspect of being a warrior and so this is the women's warrior song <clears throat> teaches us that everything happens for a reason. It's like fate or destiny is that thing that pushes us forward. Um, sometimes when things happen to us, it's because we're not on the right path and we need to just sh sh shift trajectory or else we'll keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again until the Thunderbird just kicks us in the butt and puts us on the right path where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And so this song has really gotten me through a lot of hard times. Um, not only because it's really bouncy and you can dance to it, uh, but um, yeah, it reminds me that, you know, sometimes some of the hardest things that happen are for the most beautiful reasons. And so um, I know that when I was in my car accident 10 years ago and I couldn't walk for like, you know, a good portion of like eight years, um, it taught me that I had a lot more strength than I thought I did. But it also put me on the path that I'm on now uh, where I could drum and sing and share uh, in a good way where I was politically active and uh, did a lot for the activism community um, and really led by example uh, sharing with youth um, and older people too because I think it's beautiful that I get to share with all ages uh, and the message is always the same it's very clear it's about connection about honoring the earth and about honoring each other um, and honoring those traditional ways of knowing because they're gonna get us out of this mess I'm just saying and so yeah this is the Thunderbird song this is an Anishinaabe song that I learned through a couple of elders Jared Prue Turner was one and uh, Carrie Moore was the other Chiwa. 
for living there just for the star people that was a big point of conversation yesterday it was pretty awesome um and yeah just to close i want to wish everybody a good week ahead um and uh good energy um let you know you have more strength than you think uh this is a time of healing it's a time of struggle may has been hard for a lot of people may is awful what the heck man What's wrong, May, with the man? <laughs> so I was going to say something else. So, <laughs> but <laughs> come on, May, get better. <laughs> well, it's almost over. <laughs> so uh, June is going to be much better. June is when the sun fully comes back. It's really about birth and life and growth and all of those wonderful things. So all that the trials and tribulations that have happened through May, hopefully, will um, be those seeds that are planted to bring healing and goodness and prosperity and abundance to many, many people. Um, and so to wish you a good rest of your week ahead, uh, this is the traveling song. Um, yeah, because we don't say goodbye. <laughs> our language, we say see you soon or uh, see you the next time our paths cross or to your journey. Um, and so this is to your journey, to my journey, to our journeys ahead. Uh, maybe cross paths, maybe learn, maybe grow, and maybe touch each other's spirits in a good way. Uh, so that we can make the world a better place for all of our future generations. So this is the traveling song um, and Healing love light all the good stuff to everyone uh, Miigwetch, thank you so much for tuning in. Hi. Hi, and This is the traveling song. Thank you to Sharon for Turner um, For this beautiful song before she passed and thank you to Yolanda and Ashley for bringing it back So put all the good stuff and then I'll come back. So um, yeah, thank you much everyone. Uh, hi, hi, and Marcy. Uh, I will see you next week. Uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs>